It's awesome to be able to uh, sit down and talk with you. I know you are a master of all things two wheels and now four. Um, but I'd love to start with growing up in Whistler. And I, I heard that you got your start in actually cross country racing as well. So I'd love to talk about, yeah, those early days and what drew you to the sport and initially to cross country racing, it sounds like. Yeah, uh, obviously I grew up in Whistler, which is, you know, the Mecca for mountain biking. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was then, but especially is now. Um, for me, I live near like a lot of the the trailheads and just kind of like there's there's a large network of, of mountain bike trails and and then the mountain bike, I say mountain bike trails at that time in Whistler were literally like there wasn't a bike park yet you know the bike park was really new kind of as I started to to get into mountain biking more and more so you know we'd climb up to the trailhead ride down and that was that was mountain biking um, which is essentially cross country or enduro or however you want to call it so naturally. Um, you know, I got into mountain biking and I, I loved it and then started racing because that was like the next best way to go to, to different locations and, and check out new trails and, and obviously meet other people with, you know, the, the desire to ride and, and uh, yeah, just have some fun. So uh, I guess I was, I was about six years old when I really got into it. Um, at this time, my brother was kind of doing a lot of mountain biking as cross training. He was seven years older and he was a ski racer, kind of like reaching like the national team level. And then he got super into mountain biking. And obviously as a younger brother, I was just like, I want to do what he's doing. So I, I started mountain biking a bunch. Uh, and then he ended up becoming a professional cross country racer. So then I kind of was tagging along and doing, yeah, doing BC Cups, Canada Cups, some national races and things like that from like the age of probably like nine to 14, um, you know, super into it. Uh, I didn't necessarily come from like a super wealthy family, but like I'd get like a race bike every year or two. And, and that was what I had for a mountain bike. We'd go, we'd go race. Um, I didn't have like a dirt jump bike or a downhill bike and these things when, when the bike park first kind of came around. So it was like, I was pretty heavy focused in cross country uh, but then, you know, I got a dirt jump bike eventually and then a downhill bike eventually and just started kind of just riding a bit of everything. Uh, it, it, it kind of transitioned for me when I was about 14 when I just, I just felt like I was going to like the same events and things were getting kind of repetitive. And also like the, the courses were kind of getting a little bit dumbed down. I hate to say it, but it was just like less of a challenge where I could go out and ride some other, you know, some jumps or the bike park and things like that. And I felt like I was getting more of a challenge. So I just, I naturally gravitated to like that style of riding. And it wasn't like a, there was no, I guess there was no like intent on it being like a career. But as I transitioned there, I just had some opportunities and then it kind of grew into, um, you know, more of a, more of a job and, and, and I had some support and things like that. So naturally it became, uh, a job, but it was just something I just, I was really enjoying at the time and, and obviously still do. Would you say there was a moment where you felt like not only was the opportunity there to do it as a career, but where you felt like, I love this. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Do you have like a memory of kind of where that inflection point was, or did it just kind of evolve organically as you chase the challenge in these different disciplines? Yeah, I would say pretty early on, I was like, I, I obviously was really enjoying riding my bike and I had no desire to, you know, put it down at any point. But uh, I, I would say, especially in that transition of like racing and I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the years of racing, but even when I kind of transitioned from racing to more gravity stuff in that kind of like, I saw my brother obviously as a professional cross country rider and you got into, you know, some professional road racing and things like that. And I was like, I kind of like, when I was that young and impressionable, I was like, oh, like that's my direction too. And when he kind of stepped away from all that, I was kind of like, and I, and I was also transitioning in, in the disciplines that I was riding. I was like, okay, well maybe like, maybe that's not my future. But when I kind of still was, you know, riding, you know, some gravity stuff and not racing as much and feeling like, oh, well, if I'd go and quit racing, then I'm never gonna have an opportunity to be, be a professional. Yeah, I, there was that thought in my head where I'm like, oh, I don't need to be professional. I'm just going to ride my bike because I love riding my bike. And so that, I think that was kind of 
you know, the, the obvious point where I was like, I just, I like doing this enough that it doesn't need to be a job. It doesn't, you know, I just, I just want to do this when I get the free time to do it. You kind of got into the freestyle, slope style, BMX, all these kind of disciplines at a time when the sport was really changing. Do you feel like your interest in the gravity side kind of follow this trajectory in Whistler where the sport was really evolving and slope style and free ride were all kind of taking off in the area? I, I honestly would be like, I was a little late to, to, you know, that like discipline of riding because, okay, the first joy ride happened in like 2001. And like, I was there watching it. I loved it. I was like, this is the coolest stuff ever. But it wasn't till like 2004, 2005, where I really started getting like, um, involved, you know, like where I, like I got a bike and I could go out with my friends doing the same thing. And then I maybe started doing some small contests and traveling and, and really like indulging in like the gravity side of things. Uh, so I feel like I, I wasn't like, you know, easily just like peer pressured into like, Oh, that's, that's the next kind of riding. It was just, it was just kind of natural transition. Cause I, w I was really focused on racing. Um, but then it just, yeah, just, it was more, it was more just like finding a new challenge at the time. And, and that was what was available to me. It seems like you've done that at every kind of juncture in your career, like chasing that challenge and finding the edge of what can push you. And also in the process of doing that, you've pushed a lot of disciplines forward. Um, it also seems like you bring that to the creative side where you can kind of find these projects that challenge you both as an athlete and kind of on the creative directing, you know, being a part of the uh, overall production. How, how does that fit into like your passion for the sport? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Like obviously as an athlete, you do something so long, you're like, how do I continue to find these, you know, bits of motivation to like keep keep it interesting and exciting and like, like that kind of energy to like take it, everything to the next level. Um, so there's, yeah, there was tons of little like big and small things that I did throughout my career where it was like, you know, you know, maybe it's something I want to do in a contest and that was the motivation for the next contest or it was like a bigger thing or, okay, like I want to, you know, step away from contest and focus on like content and do this with it and ha like have a bit of a plan, which is like, you know, maybe it's a bigger picture kind of idea, but yeah, there was definitely uh those aspects were, you know, the same thing as going from cross country racing to like free ride slope style stuff. I was just like, I kind of hit a point with slope style competition and, and, and free ride competition where I was just like, it wasn't really doing it for me anymore um, in terms of creativity. And then, okay, video content, I sort of had like the tools and the skill set to all of a sudden be able to build build these courses and tracks that, you know, typically I would have to go to a contest to, to ride. And I was like, okay, now I know how to do it myself. So now we can go do this and we can capture it. Um, and then, you know, with, with the help of a bunch of skilled friends, uh, and it was just like another way to express myself and maybe just do it differently. Cause you know, obviously contests, you know, the courses look similar sometimes and there's not always like the best setup for an idea you might have. So the best way to do it is just really just get out there and do it yourself. So there was that evolution of like, okay, I can step over here and I can like kind of take my riding to another level and then portray it in the way that, that it makes me feel or the way I want people to see it. So that's so cool. I think, you know, the industry around creativity and content creation and the whole kind of influencer social media movement has also kind of taken off in that lifespan of your career so far. Um, and there's been a lot of opportunity to do that. But I love hearing you talk about how it is in a way like a competitive environment. It's very different, but it still gives you a way to push the sport and yourself um, in a way that's really meaningful. It's not just about kind of like getting views or, or pushing content out. It like actually has meaning in and of itself. Yeah, you're in a bit of a, uh, uh, a battle with yourself a lot of the time obviously no competitors, but it, yeah, you're, you're battling the elements, you're battling a timeline. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously your personal, personal expectations of, of what you're looking to accomplish. And, and, and it's like a video part, like usually a contest, you show up very, very prepared. Like you've done the tricks a million times. Maybe there's like kind of one trick that's like, you know, your, your banger for the contest that you don't do all the time, but like you're fairly like dialed with everything. 
Whereas like a video part, you're building this stuff that you've maybe never built before, never ridden before, and you have an idea for what you want to do on it. And it's like, you're kind of all learning it in the moment. So you don't, you know, it's, it's a lot of the times less prepared in a way. Like obviously there's certain things you can get ready, but if you go somewhere and you build something that's entirely different than you've ever ridden, then it's like, you've got like this short window to kind of figure it out and you've got a bunch of people waiting on you to, to get it dialed. So it's, it's, it's a different kind of challenge. But uh, yeah, it very much like a, still, still that high pressure situation a lot of the time. It seems like somewhere that those two uh, two different things might come together is at an event like Rampage, where you're you know doing something new, building something, the same type of pressure, but also in a competitive environment. I'm super interested in how you mentally prepare for that because, of course, like there is a level of preparation that you can have at home. You're throwing some of the tricks you want to be able to throw at Rampage and, and practicing. But, you know, that's such a crazy environment and there's a lot of creativity and, and newness involved in that kind of competition day. So how do you like prepare mentally for that challenge? Yeah, no, it, it, exactly. Like Rampage is such a, it's like such a malleable environment, but you can't like, you can't predict how everything is going to go or like we, we get to see the venue like literally the day before we start building. So you, you don't have like a good idea, like at least a contest, like a, like a slope style contest, you kind of see the course before you show up. So you can start looking like, okay, there's like a, a jump this size and there's a step down, there's a drop and you kind of know what tricks fit where. But when you show up to Rampage, you're kind of like, you kind of want to like prepare for a little bit of everything, but you don't want to like over prepare for like one thing in specific because you could easily just kind of get skunked on on that that idea um and then yeah you kind of like obviously my skill set from a lot of the video production and and these these big builds cross over because it works really like the same like we're there we're building and then straight into riding and and, and performing so rampage is, is just like that and you're kind of like you're trying to work quick and you're trying to work with a timeline and and then obviously perform at a high level so it's very, very unique in that sense. Uh, and the terrains, you know, it's the most aggressive terrain that we'll face as, as mountain bikers uh, and, and builders. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's more of like a, an experience than a contest sometimes. What drives you to keep pushing there? Cause like, that's one of the events where, as you're saying, it is this unique skill set. It's this mix of, you know, creativity, performing under pressure, delivering in like a really high risk environment and where I, it seems like as a spectator, like people just continue to push the edge. What motivates you to keep evolving and pushing at an event where, yeah, the, the reward is really high, but the risk uh, I think is, is pretty big as well. I mean, it's definitely one of those events that you only want to show up to if you're feeling really comfortable. Um, but typically like, that's I've, I've stepped back from competing quite heavily over the years, but that's always one event where I've like, it's made sense to me where I'm like, usually by the end of the year, I'm healthy. We've done all these projects. We've been doing lots of building. I've been guinea pigging lots of features and like, I, you know, I have some ideas for, for, uh, you know, maneuvers or tricks or whatever I could bring to the event that I think would be cool. So if, you know, like usually the stars align where I'm like, this is like kind of the last thing in my year. Uh, I don't have to worry about like, you know, staying healthy for like a video project or something afterwards. It's sort of like, okay, I've, I've already like been doing this all year. It's just like another one, but in a contest format. So it, it it's just kind of one of those ones where it just, it usually fits in quite nice with, with how I plan out everything. And, uh, like a really, I don't know, like, a, a kind of a big one to end the year on too. Cause like, once I get home, it's like, already cold and starting to snow so it's like you just you kind of go out and you just destroy yourself for like two weeks and then you come home and then you just get to chill and you're like okay season's kind of like season's done you know like ride when the weather's good but you're not like stressing um you know any future content things or other contests and it's yeah it's just i mean it's just such a good experience with friends but it, it is a gnarly event and you got to take it seriously um but yeah typically for me that's kind of been the approach is just it's, it's very similar to what I've been doing kind of all year. And then it's just now putting it into a different format. What would you say? What's your favorite part of that event? It's such a like mix of things all week. Honestly. And it's like, people would be like, you're, you're crazy, but, uh, the build's really fun because it's, although it's really gnarly and the days are really long and it's just 
kind of savage work, but you're there with like, you know, a couple of close friends that you brought to help you build your line, but then you're surrounded by like 60 of your really good friends and everyone's playing music and everyone's digging and everyone's like, you know, like everyone's keeping the motivation quite high. And it's, it's just like crazy environment. Um, obviously if it was just me and a couple friends doing that by ourselves, it's just, it's not the same, but since there's like, you know, all the best riders and all really good friends and best trail builders in the world are there. And it's just, it's such a wild scene to be a part of. So I feel like that, that would be a highlight for me every time. I heard you speak about on another podcast, uh, your kind of rivalry with Cam Zink and at that event in particular, like pushing and, and being able to kind of have, I call it like competitive collaboration where it's like, uh, this person is your adversary, but they're also in a way like one of the only people that can push you to give your best, which I think, I don't know, for me as an athlete, like that's always the goal is to like, see what you're capable of. Could you talk about like those rivalries and, and what the culture is like, especially in those kind of bigger events? Yeah. I mean, Zinc was always one of those athletes that it was kind of like, he was a motivator, but we were obviously competing as well. We were really good friends, but it was like, we knew each other's abilities and, and we also knew that we were really competitive. So it was kind of like, although we would put pressure on each other, we were also kind of getting the best out of each other, which is, you know, you look back on it, it's, it's great. And like, we're super close and Zink's another one of those guys that at an event like Rampage has had like a crazy success rate. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the idea of competition is kind of having those, those people around you to push you and, and, and kind of push you to get creative as well. Like you could just kind of compete and do the same tricks or this, you know, build the same things, but it's like you try and find like the edge and that's what helps you grow as an athlete. Um, but luckily like, everyone in mountain biking, at least that I've met is, is so cool. And everyone's so, so nice that like, it's not like a, a brutal rivalry at, at all. Like everyone's such good friends and we're like, we're at the top rooting for our buddies to get down safely, whether or not it bumps us a spot and makes us, you know, puts us in that position to, to have to maybe risk it a bit more. But you know, it's the, the idea is that we want to see everyone succeed and just see the level of competition be as, as high as possible. Yeah, I think that's, you know, the definition of like true competitors. And I think that kind of like champion standard, that top level, none of the athletes are hoping that someone crashes and that's why you win. You kind of like to get your best, you want everyone to like land their tricks, have a great run and still be the best of that. Yeah, we all know the the risk at an event like that. So obviously, you know, we would never wish upon anyone to 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 go down and, and especially like you watch someone go down and then you're the athlete dropping in behind them. It's like really, really can hurt the motivation to, to do what you're going to do. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's another part of it. I know you've had a couple, couple big crashes, but I, uh, I read about one in, I think it was 2016 when you were filming and got a pretty bad concussion. Um, was that kind of your worst crash or have you had other injuries that have been big setbacks and, and how do those moments change your relationship with risk or, or do they at all? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if that, I, it's hard to really dictate what my biggest injury is. And especially with something like concussion, it's like you, it's not like a broken bone where it's like very black and white, like the bones, the bone is broken and then it's healed concussion. You know, it can linger, it can kind of come and go and there can be, uh, you know, other, uh, other things that come from it, um, like obviously like a lack in performance, you know, affects, affects your performance as an athlete and, and in just little ways that you don't even really notice. So, uh, but yeah, there's definitely, you know, na naturally in the, in the sport I chose hitting your head is, is common enough. And I've had, uh, you know, one or two pretty big concussions. Um, the, the challenge I find with those is they, they never come at a great time. Uh, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to navigate the situation of like, how long do I really need to give my body to, to kind of heal from this and, and feel healthy again and what healthy feels like, like understanding your baseline. Um, and then, you know, you might be a week or two away from a contest and, and, and you're like, I physically feel fine, but am I taking a bigger risk by doing this contest? Um, knowing that, that I've hit my head quite hard recently. 
So it's uh, it's always a tricky tricky situation to navigate. Yeah, I've I've had the same thing with a concussion in the middle of the World Cup season, and you're just kind of you're trying to like do the right thing, but it's also very difficult when. Um, with a concussion, you're the one who has to like report how you feel. You can't yeah. really rely on, you know, an x-ray or feedback from someone else to make that decision. It's really your responsibility to kind of report and, and judge that. Um, yeah. What do you think helped you in that recovery? I feel like head injuries is still such a new topic, um, but definitely having good people around with, with, knowledge on the situation at least at, especially at that time um you know i there was a good sport and health center that had like a um they had they did baseline testing for concussions and they had like the whole setup with you know all the equipment that could help kind of help me come around and like the in the healing process but also help you know maybe pr create some preventative situations in the future um, so I was pretty lucky with that and just like having the right people around me to help me and, and gauge, you know, really where I was at. Cause obviously you get a concussion, you can kind of fool yourself into thinking like, oh, you're, I'm fine, but you're also, if, you know, if your head's not fine, are you really thinking straight? So you don't, it's always hard to kind of gauge it when maybe you, you don't know, you know how you feel. Um, but yeah, I would say, uh, you know, I was just fortunate enough to have good people around at the time to to gauge it and hopefully I'd, I'd made the right decisions and, and took the right amount of time. Having that village of support is so important for those low moments and also to enjoy the high moments. How do you think about the people that you surround yourself with? Like, do you compete with like, I know you don't have like a team in the same way, but like who, who is your kind of chosen team that supports you in all these endeavors? Yeah, I would, I would say it's quite broad, to be honest. Um, although I don't have like a mountain bike team, you know, I'm, I, it's very much considered an individual sport, but like there's, there's so many people around me and like, uh, you know, close friends and people I work with and just kind of like, uh, you know, supporters of mine that, that have, uh, have done a lot. So it, it, it's honestly, it's so vast that I can't quite name everyone, but um, you know, obviously there's, there's people from the medical side and the performance side, and then there's my builders and my friends I ride with. And like, you know, there's, there's kind of this really good, like support team around me. If I, if I, you know, look at it as in a whole, and I, I have someone in almost like every kind of area where, whether, whether good or bad, like, um, you know, whether I, I get injured or whether I'm performing well, and I just need to like get to the next level. And like, there's always someone around that I can reach out to. And even if it's just like a soundboard. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky in that sense. Cause I know, especially like as you're coming up as an athlete, you don't always have those, those people around you and you've kind of got to build it out and, and, and find the people you trust and that, that are, are helping you find the performance. So, um, luckily through the years I've, I've, um, you know, just made really good relationships with these people and, and they're still all very close to me now. Yeah. And it makes it more fun to do it as well when you get to do it with the people yeah. you love and get to have those moments with your dig team at Rampage and create those types of uh, relationships around the sport as well. Yeah. That's um, it. Yeah. Well, speaking of riders coming up, I'm sure for so many young athletes, especially in some of these disciplines that are kind of getting a lot more attention and that you've been at the forefront of, uh, you are a huge role model. How do you think about that, you know, responsibility and kind of both the, the positive side and, and the hard side of being looked to as an example in the sport? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think I think about it too much, <laughs> to be honest. It's just, I kind of almost in a way mimic the things that inspired me as an athlete when I was young and, 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 and try not to, uh, portray things that I, I don't believe in. Like there's, you know, there's certain things that I would, maybe I, I did when I was coming up that I, I then realized I, that wasn't the right thing to do, or I don't think that was the best move as an athlete and things like that. And you just kind of learn from it. And it's like, I want to be the person that like, like I would, I would like, if I was watching myself, I would want that to be the inspiration, you know, like 
I watch other athletes in all different sports and I find inspiration from, you know, many, many people. And I just try and like draw on a bit of like what they're doing and then kind of hope that I'm doing the same to someone that's watching me, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. Like I just, I kind of just, I'm taking inspiration and then I'm just trying to give it back somewhere, you know, and I'm, I'm hoping that like, you know, I work hard enough and I'm doing the right things that someone's finding the inspiration out of, out of uh, what we're creating. What is your current focus? What's up next for you? Uh, obviously the rally, the American rally championship again, um, which is, uh, it's almost kind of like my vacation. Uh, I get to step away from the bike for a handful of weekends to go race some cars, which has been a blast. Um, so I've been with Subaru the last, uh, this will be my fourth season with Subaru Motorsports, which is pretty rad, but, uh, I've been rallying since 2010. So it's, it's not much different. It's just now become like a little bit more serious than it, it was when I first started. Um, but yeah, I would say the only thing that's really changed for me in, in terms of my season is just like, and similar to what we talked about, like the landscape changes a lot. Like when I started doing some, you know, production stuff and content, you know, social media was new and, and, you know, like vlogs weren't really a thing. And then they, you know, they were, there was just like, it was just a very different landscape. And so now obviously the way social media works and YouTube is and things like that, it, it's, uh, it's a big space, but you're competing against a lot of people. And it's for me, just trying to figure out some unique ways to kind of portray the content or, 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 or different areas to, to place it just to, to keep it from going stale, you know, like you put a lot of effort into these projects and creating, you know, unique content, something that's different than the last one or, or more progressive or whatever it might be. But now putting it in a place where it can really shine. Uh, and so that's, it's been a fun challenge, but it, it has been challenging to figure out like, what is that? You know, is it, is it endemic? Is it non-endemic? Is it creating story? Is it, is it more visual? Um, so that's been kind of a, I'd say a fun experiment for you know the content that we'll do this year is just trying to be a little bit more outside the box and on how we release it and where it goes. So we started this uh, with kind of why you started riding and the series overall is gonna be called Why We Ride. So I guess my last question uh, to be respectful of your time is why do you ride now? Is it the same? Uh, has that evolved over the course of your career with the addition of kind of more pressure and more visibility and, and more challenge as you kind of seek that edge? Or do you feel like it stayed the same? Um, I mean, I would say it's consistently been on the, the, the side of like, I love riding my bike. There's never been that, that feeling of like, ah, oh, I need, I need a break or I need this or that. But I, I think it's evolved in a lot of ways of like what my desires are on the bike. Um, how I, how I look to perform, how I want to feel when I ride every day. And I would say it's kind of, you know, through competition, there was times where I, I, I felt like the need to do specific things or the, the pressure to, to compete at a certain level and things like that. And I, I found as, as I kind of transitioned through contests and content and, and now kind of found like a pretty, I would say a pretty healthy place with, with my riding and where I, I feel really good about how I perform, but I really enjoy the, the, the stuff that I'm doing on the bike and the people I'm working with, um, that I've almost got to a point where I'm, I'm a little more content with being a little different, like just riding how I feel instead of riding how I think I should ride. Um, and that's kind of almost, kept riding even more exciting for me in the last handful of years where I just, I can go out and there was, there isn't like this pressure to be someone that I don't feel like I am on a, on the bike. I'm just, I'm just going to ride and I'm going to see what happens naturally. And I think, uh, again, naturally I am just already a competitive person and I'm, I'm always seeking out like, you know, performance or the next kind of like different thing. So without putting that pressure on myself, I, I think I'm already just, you know, working on that stuff. So, um, it's, it's honestly been probably the last couple of years have been some of the best years of riding I've had and, and just the most enjoyable time. So hopefully that doesn't change. And obviously when mountain biking isn't a career for me anymore, 
I'm still going to be riding as much as possible. I don't think that's going to change. It's, uh, yeah, it's just something that's, that's, that's stuck with me for life. That's super cool. Yeah. And I, I can relate with that as well. It's, it's amazing to hear you talk about that at your stage in your career. And as someone who, you know, I look up to is doing so many different things and doing them well and pushing the edge that you're still able to find that kind of like freedom almost that I think there's almost like an arc where you're like most free when you first start. And then there's like this period in the middle where you feel all this pressure and you're kind of like trying to live up to that. Okay. I have to do it this certain way or have to be, um, competing at this certain level. And then you always have this like period sounds like later on where you like reconnect to that initial freedom and you're kind of proven, but you want to push because that's who you are. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see, uh, where that takes you this year. And you've definitely got a lot of fans on the cross country side rooting for you. Uh, even though you abandoned our sport pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And, uh, I, I still love to get out for a trail ride. So it's, uh, yeah, again, that's a very, another big part of, uh, of my day to day, but it's, uh, it's just not, it's not something where we're, I guess, filming as much and things like that. But yeah, I mean, I just did a trail ride before I hopped on here and, and, uh, it's again, it's just getting out on the bike. I'm not, I'm not too fussed on, on what bike or where it is. Um, awesome. We'll have a good rest of your day and, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you out on the trail sometime. Mm -hmm.